welcome to the Read Local Show, presented by Lit Carney Bell and me, your host, Toy Thomas, author, blogger, and reading advocate. I am so excited to share today's guest with you. Dylan West writes young adult fantasy and science fiction that is faith-based. Let's meet Dylan West. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Let's meet Dylan West. How are you doing? I'm doing awesome. How about you, Toy? Oh, I'm pretty good. I got a busy weekend ahead of me, but I'm glad to be having this time to sit down and talk with you. Um, Why don't you go ahead and tell the viewers a little bit about yourself? All right. I'm Dylan West, the author of Scribes Descent, which you can see my product placement in the background. (laughs) And um, I was in the Navy for eight years as a nuclear operator which may or may not have informed some of the content that went into this book and others. Um, Me being just this big engineering and science nerd, I can't help but gravitate towards that. So hence the science fiction. I write a fair deal of fantasy too. And after I got out of the Navy, which was a long time ago now, (laughs) um, (laughs) I uh, became a web developer. So I'm writing code by day. I get up and stretch a little bit. And then I write you know, fiction by night. So I have to get up and do some weightlifting, walk and things like that to kind of, you know, not conform to the shape of my desk chair. Gotcha. I like that. <laughs> having having those stand up breaks can be helpful when you're doing a lot of writing. I did the yeah. whole code thing for a little while and it just wasn't for me, but I oh. know what you're talking about when you're just <laughs> sitting there looking at code all day or writing code all day. So I get it. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I want to start with a segment that I call On the Bookshelf. My initial inspiration for wanting to come up with this program was that I'm an avid reader and I feel like everyone should read more, just in general. And so I want to find out a little bit about you as a reader. So let's start with what is your preferred genre to read? Okay, Um, it's a real neck and neck with uh, fantasy and sci-fi it just depends on the mood i'm in sometimes i'll go on a kick where it's all fantasy and sometimes it's all sci-fi sometimes it's just a a mix okay and why do you think you feel drawn to fantasy and science fiction um probably because of the world building that's one of my favorite parts of writing is all the research that goes into it the research that kind of crosses over into world building There's just something about that process. And and when I see it in books, it, if it's done well, it blows me away. And probably the, uh, my favorite of the, you know, for, for its depth of world building was uh, the way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. That was the book that told me like, like, Whoa, I I've got to do that level of world building for the scribe series. (laughs) Nice. Okay. And what would you say is a genre that you don't necessarily hate it. It just has never really like really grabbed you. You tried it, but maybe it's just not for you. Um, probably it would be romance. Um, and it's not that I don't read romance. I actually read kind of a lot of it for my fellow authors when I'm doing critiques and I'm doing beta swaps and even review for review where we review each other's books. You know, um, I have a lot of female fellow authors, and a lot of them, admittedly, um, will write fa- um, romance. And sometimes it's it's fantasy with a lot of romance, you know. That gotcha. seems to be a popular combination too, right? Um, and, you know, I, I don't mind it. In fact, sometimes there's romance that is quite good, but I, I find that the, the problem with it, for me at least, yeah. is that sometimes it, it just kind of feels like it's really hard to be creative with that genre. Like, there's only so much you can do with that. Either to they're be, gonna get together or they're not. <laughs> right. So I mean, I guess that's that's my you know a me thing. And and I actually incorporate romance into some of my stuff, but it's more like a side yeah. thing. It's not like the main thing, you know. Yeah, I, I can relate to that because um I feel like my main genres are in are in the speculative, you know, area. Like I like the science fiction and the fantasy. I even do a little bit of like horror from you know time to time. Um, I would, I think um, for me as a writer, I did challenge myself to write like a romantic comedy once and I, and I, and I did it, but it was the hardest thing I've ever written. Like I struggled to write that book, but I did it. (laughs) That's good. It's good to challenge yourself. Yeah. 
And so um, the last question, you've already kind of mentioned it. You, you, you mentioned that, you know, you do review different books. Um, and what is like your take on reviewing books? Like, do you think it's a hassle? Is it an honor? Is it an obligation? Like, what is your stance on book reviewing? Um, probably a little all of the above. Uh, not, not really. It's not really a hassle for me. I, I do enjoy uh, supporting my fellow authors, whether they reciprocate or not. I don't view it as like you have to reciprocate or this is, you know, this isn't going to fly. I, I, I just tell people, you know, hey, I'm going to read and review your book, if you, you know, and I'm going to put it on Amazon and Goodreads. And if you have a book bug pay, book bug page, I'm going to put it there. And if you don't have that page, I'm going to be like, hey, if you have an ebook format, you should probably create that page, right? Exactly. And if they have a Barnes and Noble page, if they have a Walmart page, I'll put them there too. And if they have any other, you know, kind of pages, I'll, I'll post that review there too. Cause you know, I want to make sure that they get it all, all the venues. Um, but uh, I enjoy it because I always learn something new, mm -hmm. whether it be something to, to do or something not to do. Yeah. Um, and it sharpens my skills as a review writer because that is kind of its own skill, right? It's, it's very different from writing a critique. It's different from writing a story, different from writing a query letter. Each one of these documents has its own you know, differences. And I've had fellow authors tell me, dude, your reviews are so great. You should like teach a course on how to do this. And I was like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's no I love to hear that though because I I feel like I'm the same way I mean I don't know if my reviews are all that great but I do have people <laughs> tell me you know like it's amazing how no matter what you read you always give like an a fair assessment like doesn't mean I fall in love with every book but I always explain like why I do or don't yeah. love something and I think people really appreciate that yeah yeah I know as an author I know exactly how amazing it is when somebody just swoops in without me asking them finds my book buys it reads it reviews it gives me you know like hits the essence of what my book was trying to say and I'm like whoa you know I know how that feels so like yeah. I try to do that for other people because you know Jesus said do unto others as you would have them do unto you well this is what I would have them do unto me right exactly I like that <laughs> very nice yeah. <laughs> So now that we've gotten to know you as a reader, I want to talk a little bit about you as a writer. Okay. So I have an image um, that I'm looking at, and it, it's showing some of you doing your, your weightlifting. Yeah. And the little bit that I know about it, it's, it's, it's a discipline. Like, it's, it's also got to be something that you love to do. Um, I had a girlfriend who was really into weightlifting a lot. And um, I remember when we were in high school, she liked to run. And then one day, I just saw her lifting weights all the time. And so... It makes me think that there's definitely more to it. And knowing how much of a discipline it takes to be a writer, I'm wondering for you, is there a correlation between your weightlifting and your writing? Oh, definitely. Like um, I started lifting weights at age 13 and I would get up at five in the morning with my dad and, you know, the cold of winter. I remember huddling next to him by the, uh, in front of the little space heater in that old shed and, getting our hands warm between sets. Cause when you touch the barbell, it would be really cold. You know, <laughs> I, I remember that it was a time, you know, for my dad and I to really to bond. Um, this was shortly after he became a Christian, actually both of us became Christians okay. um, around that time. So it was really good for me to, we'd always have that time together, you know, no matter how busy he got or how busy I got, you know, with work and school, but just having that regular time and, and do it, making yourself do something that doesn't necessarily feel comfortable at the time, but you're seeing incremental progress every single week yeah. and you're, you're enjoying that progress. Like, you, and I wrote all of it in a journal and okay. that actually transferred into my writing career directly because I still journal all of my efforts, whether it be for writing or marketing, I have detailed journals of all of it. And from that habit, I can tell you that for this scribe series, I've put over 7,000 hours of um, effort into it wow. between May 8th, 2011 and today. And of those 7,000 hours, about 5,000 of the hours went into book one, Scribes okay. Descent. So I know where my time is going. That's good. Because I drew. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. you keep a detailed record. <laughs> oh. I, I, I think of myself as being detailed, but I'm not that detailed. I couldn't break it down by hours. But I do, I keep track of, you know, what it is that I'm doing. I, I love the fact that you journal. 
I, it's one of those things that I always start and never finish. Um, I've gotten better with like keeping like note journals, like, like lists and things like that. But I, I've always want, like, I, I see myself ideally as being this great journaler, but I'm not. <laughs> well, you know, I'm going to give you a little secret here. Sometimes okay. I get, I slack off. Right. Okay. And I'll go for like a few weeks without journaling anything. And I find, oh man, I've, I've got to blown it off. So I'll go back and I'll get caught up. Okay. And even if it's not super detailed, even if it's just, you know, hey, five hours on Friday, revised more scribes descent. Five hours the next Friday, I critiqued four hours on scribefile.com for other people, you know, then I, I'll, I'll at least do that. And so you just mentioned something right there. Is, is scribe a file? Is that how you say it? Yes. Okay. Cause I, I, that's another one that I started and didn't <laughs> like, oh. I, I, I go back to it from time to time because like, I, it's, it's almost like I feel guilty, but I'm giving people feedback. So I don't feel too, but like, I need to be more consistent. I definitely do. Well, I might have welcomed you. How long ago was it that you joined scribe file? Ooh. Who knows? <laughs> because I, I make it a habit to welcome every new person who okay. ever joins that. You um, I've been doing that since October of 2018. So if you joined any time after that, chances are very high. I probably welcomed you. It might have been before that. Like, oh, uh, okay. Then, I've yeah. been bad. <laughs> I've been bad. But I, I, I have good intentions. I'm gonna get back into it regularly. <laughs> no, you know? no judgment. No judgment. Thank you. Thank <laughs> Just you. encouragement. It's awesome. Thank and you. if you come back in, I will definitely welcome you. If you All know, right. Set up a new profile. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um. So my next question. Um kind of going back into your your writer process a little bit um, as a writer um, it's hard to get out there and like you know meet other writers and actually meet readers and so a lot of times we have to attend events for that kind of thing and so I have another um, image here where I see um, you've got a little creature here looks like playing a video game and I know that your book is based off a of video game so I guess my question here is, is how do you as a writer use that video content to help reach readers? Oh, man, you ask all the right questions. <laughs> I'm hoping to give you all the right answers. Okay. So how do I use the video game, right, to reach mm -hmm. the readers? Um, well, so one day in the wild blue yonder, when I actually finished producing this massive game, um, you know, I'll release it on places like Steam and GOG and um, you know, the Nintendo eShop, hopefully, if I could afford the license for that, and other places, and, you know, directly get it on people's consoles and machines and whatnot. But until that happens, what I generally do is during in-person events like my book launch party that happened at the Muse at the end of May, and at the Iconicon in North Suffolk Library that happened in April, I will set up <coughs> a 40 inch monitor. Actually, it's right here in front of me. You just can't see it. <laughs> um, I'll set that up. I'll put it. Actually, I, you can see this, this Xbox Windows controller. I'll set it up with my laptop with Scribes Descent the game loaded. And then the player, uh, I say the players, the, the visitors of my table can come up, grab the controller and just start playing. Okay. And uh, in front while other people watch. Yeah. And uh, it's been fun because, you know, like at um, the comic convention, what I've noticed happens is that the kids will get interested in the game first because, you know, they see it. It's, it's on a big screen, right? Yeah. <clears throat> Meanwhile, my stack of Scribes Descent, you know, all, all of these copies here kind of like getting ignored for the moment. And that's fine, you know, because, you know, they're not going anywhere. And then when these kids are playing, their parents are kind of watching and then they're noticing the stack of books and I'll chat with them like, hey, you know, that game that I, I started making, here's the book. And by the way, the game's not ready to sell, but the book, book is. is. Yes, right. So here, check it out. Right. So I'm talking to the parents while the kids are. And then when the kids are done playing, then I say, hey, here's the book. Do you like to read science fiction? I find that's my favorite thing to ask people. Do you yeah. like to read sci-fi? And if the answer is no, I'm like, well, do you have like a family member or a friend? And yeah. usually the answer is yes. Yeah. I think that's a wonderful strategy. I feel like as creative as writers are, sometimes we don't use that creativity when we market and approach readers. But you have like this whole plan that's like 
it's almost it's organic almost it's like I wish I had something like that I mean I I do because I have like the picture books it's easy for them to you know lure the kids in with the bright shiny stuff and then say hey parents by the way I also got this stuff over here you know so I love what your your whole marketing strategy as a writer you really it's it's inspiring (laughs) well thank you thank you all right so I want to shift gears a little bit and actually get into this book I'm so excited um so first of all, I want you to just tell me a little bit about Scribes to Sand. Like what, what's, what's going on? Okay, so I wanted to make my book as different as I could possibly make it. And so in order to do that, I had to create a, an entirely new universe. And to do that, I had to invent planets from scratch. And I have this on my blog, which I'm sure, you know, there'll be links for later. Yes. But <laughs> in the blog, I, I try to give out, I try to dole out these um tidbits of the science research that I put into it and the very first one was how I build world maps from scratch and I could talk for a long time about all the ways I try to make it as geologically accurate as possible so um remember I said like way of kings really inspired me uh Mm -hmm. earlier well Brandon Sanderson went into great detail you know with his world map and not just a regional map but like the whole world of Russia right so I was like all right I'm going to have a world map here, you know, and uh, and build things into that world that the reader will never see in the finished map, like mapping out tectonic plates, mapping out major oceanic currents, mapping out the trade winds, knowing that the trade winds blow this way between this line of latitude and the equator means that the mountain ranges here based on the tectonic plate outlines means that there's a rain shadow desert on this side of that mountain range. Like I go into that level of detail with the yeah. world building so that I'm inspired. So it becomes real in my head, whether those details ever make it to the pages of my book. Right. Uh, it's got to be super, super real to me first. Um, but to answer the broader question, like, you know, what did I, what all did I, uh, what is this book really about? Well, <clears throat> the, the elevator pitch, I guess I, I like to give people is that, On this planet, which is called Daishan, it's never had an earthquake until one day it has a big one. And the military sends down a team of young linguists, of all people, down this deep mine shaft to find the cause of the quake. And when they get there, they find a lot more than just the cause. That's the the quick version. Okay. So... (laughs) So they send linguists to figure out the cause of this earthquake. They send them underground through a mine shaft. Why linguists? That's a good question. <laughs> and it borders a little bit on spoiler okay. territory if I answer it too much. Gotcha. But that is where the word scribe, you know, comes from. Okay, cool. I like that. Well, part so, of <laughs> so I actually want to talk about, you know, this cover a little bit more. Um, sure. So I see the three circles. Are those like different levels of the shaft, or, or do they? Uh, yes, actually, actually, yeah, they're diff- They're three distinct areas, okay. each with their own features. And uh, you know, I, I probably shouldn't get, tell you too much more because it, it might become a spoiler. But yes, you'll definitely see those three distinct areas. Um, and, well, you'll definitely see the first two in book one. You really don't see the bottom one until book two. Okay. Cool. Now, did you design the cover of this book or did you work with a designer? So I designed it, like the concept of it, but then I worked with a pair of, a pair, a, a set of homeschooling twins in Williamsburg. Okay. They actually painted this on a physical canvas. It's on my wall. I'm looking right at it right now. <laughs> and they took a really nice digital photo of it. Um, and that became the cover. Nice. I like that. So now I want to take a moment and kind of hand the rings over to you because I understand you can do a demo for us so we can see what the game looks like. Exactly. So you'll get to see what the kids saw at the Iconicon. All right. So you want me to go ahead and share my screen? Yeah, absolutely. Let me know if you can see my screen. Yes, I can see it. Okay. All right. And how's the volume? Um, I'm not, I'm not hearing anything from the game. Oh, you're not. Okay. Let me see. Uh, 
that might be a setting. You still don't hear anything? Oh, I, I heard. Well, I heard something pop up, but I don't actually hear anything. Volume all the way up. Can you hear anything yet? Can you hear the swords swinging? Oh, I do hear that. Yes. Oh, yeah. good. All right. So I just had to turn the volume up. Gotcha. So um, this, the character you see, the you know with the the auburn hair, that's Mallory. That's the main character. And what you're seeing here is the um, the research deck, which is near the top of the bio prison. That's the big mine shaft. And this guy here with the big crazy hair, this is Rain, and he is one of the three main characters. So it's really, um, Bo oh, Boxer. His name is Boxer, and then Mallory, and then Rain is the other. Those are the, the big three that really are the stars of the show. Okay. And um, what you see here, this dialogue, this is mostly pulled directly from the book. Oh, okay. Um, a little bit of adjustments to make sense for the game you know yeah i no mind barrett's always been well barrett -y. good particle physicist though he interacts better with neutrinos than he does with people and he's stranger than a strange cork <laughs> and here i thought i'd heard every physics joke did you make them up back when i was an assistant zookeeper i spent many mind-numbing hours of shoveling poo out of cages lots of time to think of puns <laughs> So I'm going to just kind of cruise through real fast so that you can kind of see the highlights here. And I did all the art for this. I did all the programming. I did all the design. The only thing nice. I did not do is the music. And in fact, the song that you're hearing right now is from a game called Hollow Knight, which, is, which was composed by Christopher Larkin, the music was. Um, oh. Excellent game. In fact, the art that you see here was heavily inspired by that game, too. I can um, barely hear the music. Oh, okay. All right. I mean, I can hear it, but like, I don't know if anyone watching will hear it because I, oh, I can that's barely. Fine. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um, so, and a lot of this is, um, this, this is probably at about the 80 seven to 80 percent polish level i'm gonna have to go through and clean up a lot of art and um, mm -hmm. especially programming bugs when i was showing this off at the iconicon there were the kids were having a, a field day finding all the bugs I'm, oh yeah they love to find what's wrong with your stuff <laughs> oh, yeah. but it see, looks have, really cool so what you're seeing here is the area map, and you'll see that it fills in as you explore more of the area. I love that because it feels like a completionistic kind of thing. Yeah. And um, let's see if I come down here. I'll show you one of the first power-ups, if I can play my own game here. <laughs> Oops. I'm used to being able to ledge grab these ledges, but I forgot I don't have the glove object yet. That's what I'm about to get now. Okay. And these coins you see, those are called nickels. They are the currency in the book. Oh, okay. And I saw so the now glove. if I go back here, you can see that the glove is now in my inventory. So you can toggle between the inventory and the, uh, the map. And if I come in here, you can break that wall from the back. Nice. Yeah, now that I have the glove, you can see that I can do ledge grabbing. The problem with this item right now is if I grab the corner, I'm going to try not to do it. If I grab, grab the corner of like a, a wall, every so often I will ledge grab myself inside the geometry and then I'm stuck. Oh. But as some of the, the young players have discovered, you can actually ledge grab your way back out of the wall a lot of times. So. See, that's why it's good to have kids test your products because they know. They, they figure out stuff. <laughs> exactly. So, and I want to show you, this is the first boss. It's the Ragna. And you can see, like, I'm pushing him across the stage and I'm not getting hurt. I, also, I can't hurt him and he can't hurt me. And that's because, as the programmer, I simply haven't programmed any damage between he and I right now. But gotcha. the little rock bugs you saw me killing earlier, they can hurt me. Gotcha. And in fact, the little white um, cube looking things in the top left corner, those are called med nanos. That's my health. Okay. And actually, 
those med nanos are inside um, Mallory, Rain, and Boxer in the, the, the book. Um, you just don't see them in graphical form there. Right. But, so I, I tried to make this as faithful as I could to the, um, you know, to the, the, to the book. book. And see, I'm not going to show you everything in this area because it would take a while. Okay. This is one of the sentient, well, sapient creatures that I invented for the Scribe series. It's called a Myophos. And I don't want to tell you too much about it because, um, you know, that would be a massive spoiler. But yeah. just know that what I tried to do is I tried to stay away from all the Middle Earth um, creatures that we've become so familiar with, like yeah. wolves, dragons, dwarves. I, I wanted to create com a completely new species and uh, heavily documented their anatomy and their capabilities and all that stuff and my wiki and all that. But yeah, this was uh, basically this, you know, I haven't finished this area here, but uh, that's basically it um, for the game so far. You've been working on this game in that you made your book based on this game. And I just think that's so cool. <laughs> oh, well, thanks. <laughs> All right. So, um, so I do want to shift gears just a little bit. Um, Scribe Descent sounds amazing, and I'll have to add that to my TBR. Um, I want to get into what I call the silly section of the interview, and this is just where I just ask some fun questions. Um, I'm going to start out <laughs> with giving you a little scenario here. So think of it as um, Noah's Ark number two, okay? Um, we got to try to save some people or save some animals on the planet, but there's limited space, okay? You only get to pick one. Which of these animals is going to make it on the second arc? Is it going to be the sloth, the koala, or the red panda? Oh, the sloth, for sure. <laughs> Why the sloth? Uh, just cuter. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I, I think they're really cute, too. <laughs> okay, what I'm are... I'm not going to steal my food true because <laughs> if they try to steal my food i have plenty of time to swipe it away yeah they'll it'll, it'll be you'll get there way before they will <laughs> um so the next question is what are five items that you would need to survive alone on a tropical island hmm five items probably a knife okay um i mean if there's already fresh water there you know in the form of a lake or stream or something like that then that's probably good but if if there isn't anything like that then i need a plastic sheet and i need to drape it across some surface to catch rainwater because okay. on the tropics there's heavy rain mm -hmm. and if i can catch that and plastic that's probably clean enough we're probably far away from sources of pollution that i'm worried about drinking acid in my rain right so water I'm, I'm gonna die soon without water so actually that plastic is more important than the than the knife yeah uh, the knife can help me with things like cutting into coconuts without shattering them and losing the water exactly. but with coconuts they need to be the the kind of the um the unripe ones the green ones because those have less meat and more water Right. I had to do research for that for the, the <laughs> related novella to Scribe's Descent called Emulsipation coming out this August. So I've been oh. already been kind of thinking about it takes place on desert uh, on tropical islands. Actually. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> That's so great. I'm glad you asked this question. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then um, after that, uh, well, it's it's tropical, so I don't really need like a big coat because it's not going to be cold. Right. So I don't need to worry about clothing. It, it, well, I mean, I'm probably not around people, um, but nope, even if I yourself, <laughs> yeah, I'm by myself. So um, and then a form of signaling. Actually, I'm probably letting down my survivalist on master master class because she would be like, oh, Dylan, the first priority is signaling. And what I mean by that is something reflective. So probably a signaling mirror would be okay. uh, my okay. next thing. So that when I see a helicopter or a plane flying overhead, I can put it next to my my eye and I would practice I would like try reflecting light on and targeting it on certain objects make sure I'm good with my 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 accuracy and when a plane flies overhead I would turn and try to flash I would move like this to make the glint of light noticeable to a plane flying overhead um, so that I you know they would see me um, nice. the next thing I would do is just a set of big noticeable objects like rocks or 
palmetto fronds or whatever in a clearing so that I could form the letter X, a big letter what? X. So because that's your that fourth is, thing? Say again? Is that your fourth thing, the objects? Yeah, whatever objects those are. And what that does is in a clearing with color contrast, if I get something that stands out, I get like, so if it's lush green, if I could find something red, I would make an X out of those red things. Because um, that would, if you make an X, that's a signal known by all aviators that there's trouble, that I need to stop and pick this person up, someone stranded. So I'd make a big red X. Okay. Um, and then the fifth thing, um, well, let me think, what would be the next most, well, food is important, so, hmm, maybe a fishing pole, okay. because the tropics probably would have edible fish, so that would probably be my five things. I like it. That's a really good list. You put some research into it. <laughs> yeah. I was expecting you to be like, ah, oh, some sunscreen, uh, a frying pan. Like <laughs> this is the, the level of research that I try to do for my books because I want it to be as realistic as, as I can get it. That I think it's just so great that I asked you that question and it actually applies to the novella that you're working on. So I'm like, that's great. <laughs> All right, and then the last question, you're gonna love this one. Okay. Since I know that Scribe's Descent um, is based on a video game that you created, why don't you tell me what your top five video games are? Oh, awesome. Okay, so the first one is Chrono Trigger. I don't know if you've heard of it or not. Mm -hmm. If you haven't, we can still be friends. <laughs> okay. um, and then after, because of the story, the story is awesome. Okay. And then, um, and it's got this quirk that the main character never talks. Oh. It's just that other characters talk to him. Okay. And you would think that would, would be weird, but actually I didn't even notice the first couple of times I played through. <laughs> no. And it's got multiple endings based on what you do. Okay. I like um, that. Yeah. And then, so Chrono Trigger would be number one. Number two would probably be Hollow Knight, which is the game that you, well, you may have heard the music from, but definitely the, the visual um, inspiration for my game okay. comes from Hollow Knight. So then number three would probably be, shoot, I like, I tweeted a list about this very thing like <laughs> about three weeks ago. I'm trying to remember what I tweeted. Um, gosh. There's so many good games. Maybe um, Zelda Breath of the Wild, That's a just good because one. of the exploration. Yeah. And then after that, Super Metroid okay. from like the 90s. Yeah. Love that. I, I love Metroidvanias in general. In fact, my game is a Metroidvania where it's got gated progression and there's right. a lot of backtracking and all that. And then the fifth, uh, hmm, maybe one of the Final Fantasies. Like okay. Final Fantasy 7 or 12, one of those. Nice. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a, a pretty um, good list. Uh, you got some new games, some old games, all kind of mixed in there together, showing your appreciation for the genre. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> so we have kind of come to the end. Um, this was so much fun. I liked, um, I've never had anyone do a video game demo on the show before. So that was that was great. I loved that. Um, why don't you go ahead and tell the viewers where they can find you or your work online? Okay, so you can stop by dylanwestauthor.com and uh, there you will find a few things. One is a newsletter sign up. The very first thing I ask everybody is please sign up for my newsletter, not just because you'll get updates, which you will, but the biggest reason to sign up is because if you're a science geek like me, you will get some of the geekiest research tidbits sent to your inbox every month, usually toward the end. In fact, my next one's coming out probably today or tomorrow. And um, so you will get to see a lot of this in-depth research that I do behind the technology, the inventions for you know the series, the world building, a lot of that stuff goes in those newsletters. And um, the second thing I ask people to do is, try the sample of my book. I put the first four chapters of Scribe's Descent on my website. So read those four chapters. If 
you know, if you find that you enjoyed it and you want to read more, there's a link right there to the Amazon page. So if you just type in Scribes Descent in an Amazon search box, you will see this book cover. And um, there you can get it in three formats. You can buy it from Kindle for $2.99. You can get the paperback for $9.99. And you can get the hardcover for $19.99. Nice. There's actually a fourth option. If you're a Kindle Unlimited subscriber, you can borrow the book for free. Nice. I like that. Very good. Well, I think we've covered all the bases here. Um, I want to remind our viewers to always check out the credits. I always have something fun to share there. Um, for my Patreon supporters, Dylan does have some exclusive content just for you guys. So until next time, stay safe, be blessed, and have fun reading. Bye.